Yo, what the hell's up? Welcome back to Reviews with Jake, where I just got done watching The New Mutants. The New Mutants is about a school slash hospital that is meant to sort of tame and control new mutants as they discover their powers and learn to control them. However, a new girl is admitted to the facility and things start to shift a little bit. Ah, <sighs> felt good to be back. This grand return for me into a movie theater is a drum roll that's been going on a lot longer than the last six months of COVID. I mean, this damn movie was not catching a break at all. I was actually starting to feel bad for it, which is rare. Movies that undergo the struggles that this movie faced, calling for reshoots, pushing back release dates to regroup and figure things out again, usually doesn't provoke much sympathy from me. Usually it's Hollywood's way of showing us that they messed up, they miscalculated something, they're plugging the holes on a sinking ship. I can only speak for myself, but as an indie filmmaker, it's liberating to see that that happens at the highest level. We struggle with this all the time, it's tough to catch creative lightning in a bottle, especially when you only have limited resources like all of us down on ground level. So it's nice to see when they struggle when they have seemingly unlimited resources. But this didn't seem like the case for this movie, at least based on the things that they were reporting. I mean, it didn't seem like these were self-inflicted wounds. This movie wasn't shooting itself in the foot. It was just getting caught with bad luck. I don't know, this movie just seemed freaking cursed. So when the dust finally settled and it's finally released, I mean... I don't know, it's weird. It's the great white buffalo of movies. I just never thought I would ever be watching this movie. It was like the perfect combination of weird to see this movie after all these years, finally, while stepping foot into a movie theater for the first time in six months, a place where I would go at least once a week and seeing how it's transformed. It's just, the whole experience was weird as hell. I mean, part of me was sitting back in my chair in the theater being like, ah, nice like old times. But then the other part of me was like, how long is this movie? Not gonna lie, it sucked wearing a mask for an hour and a half while I watched a movie. It was the first time I had to wear a mask while relaxing in the last six months. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I will say though, that is the one aspect that I am not looking forward to watching Tenet because I know Christopher Nolan did not all of a sudden start to make short movies. But I digress. Here we are, new mutants back in the theater and here's what we got. The pros of this movie started with some great acting performances from top to bottom. I mean, top to bottom in this case is six people, but they all killed it. I mean, excluding the questionable accents that some of them had that kind of faded in and out throughout the course of the movie, other than that, I thought they all did a fine job working with what they were given. All of these new mutants that they played are damaged birds. They all have wounds that weigh on them daily, and I thought all these actors really did a good job of channeling that and bringing that pain out for us on screen. I also really liked the film's soundtrack and score. It had a lot of really soft, calm, yet very haunting keys that really gave the film a very ominous feel. Which paired very well with this movie's overall vibe and concept. I mean, when you take a step back and look at this movie, like each of the three acts and the events that happen within them, I mean, this is a very interesting movie. It's very different and kind of outside of the norm of the usual superhero formula. And I do respect what this movie was trying to go for. I've never read the source material, but I'd imagine the people that did, that were behind making this movie happen, saw potential there. And it's definitely there. I mean, to see a movie like this that's within the X-Men universe, but totally different. I don't think I need to go on a whole nother rant about the power of perspective, but this movie uses it well. I mean, this is an interesting new way to tackle the topic of X-Men and mutants. I mean, it, it's fun. It's fresh. But you know it's not going to be too different. I mean, you know for a fact that it's all going to build up to the third act where things start to kick up and you get a few big superhero throwdowns. Which weren't really the greatest of superhero throwdowns that I've ever seen, but I gotta say, they were entertaining enough. I mean, it could have been just the drought that we've gone through. I mean, I don't know, and Endgame, Spider-Man Far From Home, I, I guess Dark Phoenix is in there, but I mean, it's been like a year since we've had all those movies. It's been a long time. I mean, at least it's felt like it. I mean, when you consider the past 10 years of the MCU, I mean, we got multiple entries within a year, plus DCEU movies. I mean, having a year without having like a big superhero brawl is just a really long time. So maybe I needed that fix a lot more than I thought I did because, well, this wasn't the greatest big superhero CGI clash that I've ever seen, but I enjoyed it. It was good to see that again. Refreshing. However, the cons do start right there because the CGI in these portions was, well, a little questionable. I mean, these action sequences required a lot of post work. These creepy sequences that they also had required a lot of it too. And you, I don't know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but you'd think after being delayed a couple years that they would have had a little bit more time to render that through and polish it out a little bit more. 
I mean, some of the stuff that they had was very cool. In theory, the potential was there, but it just really wasn't executed the greatest. In fact, in a lot of ways, that just kind of sums up this movie, potential versus execution. I mean, this movie on paper should have been amazing. It's just, they just didn't really pull it off as great as they could have. I think the primary thing is that this movie tried to do way too much. I mean, you have the obvious superhero element. That is the grand appeal, but now you're bringing in this twist of horror, which is like the new spin of that. You know, very interesting, new, tough to pull off that mix. But then you also throw in like an angsty teen drama, which they also throw in there. And trying to balance all these things, it just fell short on all of them. I mean, this film's tone was just all over the place, and the pacing was super jarring. Speaking of inconsistent, the characters in this movie were very inconsistent. Scene to scene, they were completely different. In more than one way, for starters, their personalities and attributes would shift. From one scene, they would have these opinions and viewpoints and thought processes, and have something completely different in the very next scene. Like in one of the scenes, one of the kids sitting there moping like, I belong in here. I don't deserve to be out there with everyone else. But then in the very next scene, the very next scene, the dude freaks out and goes like, ah, when can I leave? I don't belong here. Similarly inconsistent with these characters, and I don't want to be the person that points sucks. It sucks that this happened, but this is the reality of it. There were moments where the actors and actresses would age from one scene into the next. I mean, it was very obvious that they grew up. Puberty's a bitch. I mean, the director basically admitted that this was an issue, which sucks. I mean, this movie went through so many delays and had to jump through so many different hoops, and time is of the essence, and unfortunately, this movie got struck with bad luck. I mean, I hate to point it out because it sucks that it happened, but... I gotta say it. But don't feel too bad, because even if that wasn't the case, the characters in this movie, well, would have sucked anyway. I mean, when you boil it all down, every character in this small ensemble, I mean, they're all based on cliches. You have the bitchy pretty girl, you have the complimentary dickhead pretty boy, you have the dorks. I mean, it's the breakfast club. It checks all the boxes from Cabin in the Woods. It doesn't matter if you give them superpowers. That doesn't do enough to separate these characters from their respective regurgitated roles. Aiding in this con was some really bad writing and dialogue. Damn near every exchange and conversation just crawled under my skin. For a film that was trying so hard to be different, so hard to be original, it just felt like bad versions of all the same thing. I mean, it just reached across genres far and wide and just pulled them into a cup. It was like going to McDonald's when you were a kid and you would just stick your cup under each of the pops and just put them all in the cup and be like, <laughs> All in all, this movie wasn't a total dumpster fire, but considering the potential and how long we've been waiting for it, it was a disappointment. I'm going to give The New Mutants a C-. minus. I will say, though, it felt good to be back in the theater. Hopefully we can keep that up. Fingers crossed. But that's just me. What do you guys think? Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. And make sure you're subscribed to this channel to stay up to date on new reviews coming real soon. Stay safe and thanks for checking in.